dual radiators, nine fans, a pump, and a GPU water block, all powered by a single cable and daisy chain together, controlled by a tiny black box that fits in the palm of your hand. This is a new way to power a water-cooled PC, and I spent the past week planning, building, and documenting my experience working with the Corsair IQ Hydro X system, including risking my personal 4090 GPU to see if this new water cooling system is all worth it. Later on, we'll talk about this video's sponsor Squarespace, but for now, let's take a look at everything I learned and start the build. Starting off with the CPU, I wanted to go with my personal favorite, the 7800X3D. This is already a very efficient CPU, and water cooling this will just be overkill. But overkill is kind of the point here, and I expect it to run pretty cool using a custom loop. Gaming is the only thing I plan to do with this machine, and this CPU is widely considered the best you can buy at the moment. Now you could take this a step further with a 7950X3D, or on the Intel side, a 14900 but I don't have the need to spend the extra money on one of those when it's not going to make any meaningful performance increases in games. Plus, this thing has frequently been going on sale for as low as $350 to $370. I'll have a link in the description if you want to check if it still is. For the motherboard, I'll be using the ASUS ROG Strix X670E. This is a completely overkill motherboard with two of the three PCI Express slots being Gen 5 ready and four total M.2 slots, three of those also being PCI Express Gen 5 ready. We also have some quick release buttons for both the GPU and M.2 drives. We've also got built-in Wi-Fi 6E, 13 total USB ports, and a BIOS flashback button. Now, the only thing keeping this motherboard from being perfect is the lack of a USB 4 port, but otherwise, this thing is absolutely stacked. For the RAM, I have 64 gigs of DDR5 6000 memory from Corsair. Now, this is spread across two sticks, so I might actually pick up another two in the future to fill out those remaining slots on the motherboard for a total of 128. These do have an Expo profile that can be enabled in the BIOS once everything is up and running, which will help us get those advertised speeds and proper timings. If you're gonna go with an Intel chip though, you'll wanna make sure you get a set with an XMP profile to get those same benefits. Now, I don't have a Gen 5 M.2 at the moment, so I'm instead gonna use a Gen 4 2 terabyte 990 Pro SSD from Samsung. Plenty of storage to start off with, and I'll still have those remaining three slots to easily upgrade in the future. The water block I'm using to cool the CPU is the Stealth Gray Corsair XC7 RGB Elite LCD. The main draw here is that super bright, customizable LCD display that can show off different temperature readings, designs, or to display an image. It also has an RGB ring around the display, and it's all easily visible through the tempered glass panel on the case. The block definitely has some weight to it, and it does feel really solid, although the pieces to screw in the fittings are made of a hard plastic, so probably should be careful not to over-tighten your fittings when setting everything up. It couldn't be easier to install though. Just remove the pre-installed brackets from the motherboard and remove the plastic cover over the pre-applied thermal paste. And then we can screw that water block over the CPU using the existing backplate. This also comes with an LGA 1700 backplate in the box if you decide to go with Intel. As far as cooling goes, it looks to be performing as well as I'd hope with the CPU topping out at 61 degrees Celsius after a few hours of playing Cyberpunk 2077, Phantom Liberty in 4K maxed out with path tracing. This looks to be on par with what I've seen in a lot of AIO coolers. This also is not actually IQ link, but there is just a single USB-C cable that runs from the water block to the motherboard. So we'll plug that in later when its time. Now that the motherboard prep is complete, we can move it to the case and I chose the Corsair 5000T. This is a fairly large mid-tower case, but it's going to give us plenty of room to work in for that hardline custom loop and pump. It has space for up to 10 120mm fans, which we will be taking advantage of along with two 360mm radiators. It also has a tempered glass side panel that opens on a hinge, same as the back panel that gives an easy access to all of our cables. It includes a Commander Core XT to control six RGB fans and the built-in RGB lighting that frames the sides in the front. Now, we'll only be using that built-in fan controller for one of our exhaust fans, as the other nine will be using IQ Link fans. But if you're not using as many IQ Link devices as I am today, then this is incredibly convenient. It also has four USB 3 ports, a USB Type-C, and a headphone jack on the top. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take off the side, top, and front panels, then remove the pre-installed fans. Now we can lower our motherboard into the case, align it with the standoffs, and secure it into place. I've got two 360 millimeter radiators to put in, along with these IQ Link fans. What's cool about these IQ Link fans is that they can magnetically connect to each other, and once connected, they're completely powered and controlled from a single cable. So you only need one cable to connect and power all three of these fans. Then from there, you can connect from this stack of three fans to any other IQ Link device. They're all controlled by the single tiny IQ Link hub, which with it, you can power and control up to 14 total devices, a max of seven from the left and seven from the right side ports out of the hub. 
If you exceed that seven per side limit, then you will get a little error in the IQ software, which will put some of those devices into a low power mode. Okay, so let's connect our three fans together, align the holes of the fans to the holes on the radiator, and then secure them together. I'll be setting one of the radiators to a pull config and the other to push, because I'm gonna be using one at the front side as intake and the other at the top as exhaust. Now we can lower the radiator with the fans attached into the case and then secure it. I'll also be using another three IQ link fans at the front. So let's connect those together and then secure them into the case as well. So next thing I wanna set up is the power supply. And for that, I have the Corsair RMX Shift 1200. This is an 80 plus gold power supply and uses Corsair's newer and smaller type five connectors. But what makes the Shift so special is the relocation of the modular connector panel. So typically the connections for a power supply are made on the back, which when you're setting up your PC, the easiest thing to do is to consider all the connections you're gonna need to make and then plug them in before securing the power supply unit into the case itself. But because the shift series moves those connections to the side, you can install the power supply unit into the case first, then connect the cables as you need. It's honestly really convenient. With that installed, we can start wiring some things up. I'm gonna start with the IQ hub that just needs to be powered by a single eight pin PCI Express power connector and then plug that into the USB port on the front. Then plug in the CPU connector and we can run the motherboard power connector, but let's not plug that in right now, which we'll talk about that later. After that, we just need SATA power for the case RGB controller and fan hub. Then we can run the 12 volt high power cable for the GPU for later. That RGB controller needs to be plugged into a USB header as well, along with all these case cables. While this build's main purpose is gaming, it is of course still a PC, and it can do many other things like building a website at today's sponsor, Squarespace, where right now, if you use the link in the description, you can start a free trial and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Squarespace has flexible templates that make creating a new website very simple. You can select one from the hundreds available and customize it as much as you need to fit your brand. Squarespace also allows you to add an online store. This gives you the ability to track orders and website traffic in the analytics section. You can also create email campaigns such as newsletters, to send out to all of your subscribers. Even if you're simply looking to create an online portfolio, Squarespace is the ideal platform to do it. When you're ready to build your new website, head over to squarespace.com slash Devin Johnston to start your free trial today. And make sure that you use the code Devin Johnston to save that 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, now let's set up our GPU. And for this build, I'm going with a Gigabyte Gaming OC4090. Now, in order to get this thing to work with our custom loop, we have to disassemble the GPU, which can seem like a daunting task at first because, well, this is an $1,800 GPU that I paid for with my own money. And if I mess this up, I'm screwed because doing this will void your warranty. But anyway, this actually ended up being significantly easier than I was expecting. The specifics around taking apart your GPU are gonna vary based on the model and make you're using, of course. Still, you'll wanna make sure you have a good toolkit. I'm using this one for my fix-it. Then there's a few screws to remove along the backplate and IO bracket. I ended up taking off the front fans as well, but in hindsight, that probably wasn't necessary. Once you find and remove all of those screws, just gently pull this heatsink off the card and the 4090 is exposed. From there, we just need to unplug the fans and pull off these thermal pads then clean the GPU to get it ready for the new water block. You'll wanna take your time with this step and see if you can find an online guide on how you can disassemble your specific GPU. This is the new IQ Link XG3 hybrid GPU water block. The main benefit here is that it's universal to fit most 4080 and 4090 GPUs. I found that the majority of water blocks seem to be designed around Founders Edition cards, but those are really difficult to get your hands on. The downside here is that it's not as good looking as other water blocks like the XG7 from Corsair. It does seem to be a mostly plastic construction, which honestly doesn't feel as premium as all of the other Corsair items. There's also no backplate, and instead of the heat sinks on the VRMs, there's just a fan that blows directly onto the card. But with that aside, it's actually very effectively cooling my 4090. I'm seeing the GPU temp sitting in the mid to high 40s. After two hours of playing Cyberpunk 2077, Phantom Liberty, completely maxed out in 4K with path tracing and similar temps in Ratchet & Clank, again, maxed out in 4K with ray tracing and no DLSS or frame generation. This is a range of around 10 to 13 degrees lower than what I was seeing on the default cooler. Overall, I do like this as an option. The other traditional water blocks still exist, so if you have a specific GPU that it fits, then you can still use those. But if you don't, and you still want all the benefits of water cooling your GPU, like my situation here, then this option now exists for you. I would like to see the next revision feel higher quality, especially if you're gonna be pairing it with an $1,800 GPU. Now that we've installed the GPU, it's time to start thinking about our custom loop. First, we're gonna need a pump reservoir combo. I have the Corsair XD5 RGB Elite. This is part of the Hydro X line along with that GPU water block. 
The pump and the RGB light that goes around the reservoir is powered and controlled by a single IQ link connection, but there's no output IQ connection, so the chain would need to end at this device. You can also view the coolant temperature and set the pump speed based on different system temps in the IQ app. So there's some pretty decent flexibility here. It definitely feels hefty and high quality and it has a push down tube at the top to prevent air bubbles and noise. So this first bracket attaches to the bottom of the pump, then you can secure it to the fan bracket with four thumb screws. From there, you can kind of adjust the vertical position. So before actually attaching it to the fan, you can try holding it into the position you want in the case and try to get as close as you can to your desired spot. Now that I found where I want it, I'm going to take off the bottom front fan and attach the pump, and then place them into the case. Now that all of our components are in place, it's time to plan out these hard lines. The first run I'm going to work on is probably the easiest, which is from the pump to the GPU. Because the GPU fittings point out, we also need these 90 degree rotary adapters. From there, we just need to do a single right angle into the pump. The tubing I'm using is from Corsair as well, and it's the Crystal Clear XT PMMA acrylic hardline. To start, we first need to cut this down to a more manageable size. And for that, I have this kit, which includes a fine tooth saw, a cutting jig to hold the tubing into place, a silicone insert, which we'll be using later on to make our bends, a deburring tool to smooth out the edges, and a bending tool to get perfect 90 degree angles. Now this is an incredibly hard tubing and it's gonna take a decent amount of heat to bend it. So we'll also need a heat gun. I picked one up from Amazon for like $20. And if you've never used one of these before, it basically just blows hot air. There's no open flame or anything like that. So now the process is to cut the tubing to a length that's longer than what you think you'll need. Clean off any debris, slide in the silicone insert, which this is gonna prevent the tubing from collapsing when we apply the heat. Then find the spot you wanna make the bend and hold that over the heat gun. What I like to do is rotate the tubing in the exact spot I want the bend, about six to eight inches over the heat gun for about 10 to 20 seconds. Then start moving the tubing back and forth while rotating to heat the surrounding area. It takes around a minute or two, but eventually the tubing will start to soften. Once it can easily bend, slide one end into the bending tool and make your bend. Then hold it there for a few minutes until it cools down. Then comes the process of cutting little by little until you have the perfect length for your run. Now, before you push the tubing into a fitting, you'll wanna make sure that you use the deburring tool to smooth out those ends and prevent them from cutting an O-ring. And so I wouldn't say this process is hard, but it is time consuming where you have to cut, deburr, check, cut, deburr, check, repeat for hours. With that in mind, you'll wanna plan a couple of days on this step and really take your time and get everything set up the way you want it. But once that's done and all the lines are in place, we can test the loop for leaks. It's not difficult, it just involves using a pressure leak tool like the one I have here. Just attach it to one of the open connections and pump the system with air. If the system holds the overpressure for 30 seconds or longer, then it's considered airtight and it's ready to be filled. So the pump includes a jumper that you can connect to the 24 pin motherboard connector. And what this will do is allow the system to turn on when you switch on the power supply. From there, you can run the pump and fill the entire loop. To make filling the reservoir easier, Corsair also sells this filling bottle. So we can fill this up with the coolant and begin filling the reservoir. Once it's filled up, we can switch the power supply on, allow the liquid to move through the loop, and then immediately turn it back off when the reservoir empties. Then we just repeat that step until the whole loop is completely filled. Once it's filled, we can put some paper towels down around the system and just run it for a few hours. Now I'm overly cautious and I ran mine overnight, but the idea here is to check the paper towels for any signs of leaks. If they look okay, then you're safe to finally plug in the motherboard connection and turn on the system. And that's the build complete. Now it does take a few days for the liquid to work out all of the bubbles, but once it does, the liquid will start to appear completely clear. I also added a valve coming out of the reservoir so that I can easily drain the loop when needed, which is recommended to be changed around every year or so. Overall, I really like this new IQ Link stuff. It does make for a really simple and clean cable setup. And it's definitely my preferred method now for setting up fans and these other devices. I mean, with these nine RGB fans alone, there would have been a total of 18 wires to manage. And instead, now there's just the one. So that's huge in my opinion. But with that, there is a bit of planning that needs to be done. Obviously, these all come with wires and hubs in the box, but you may need to pick up a four-way splitter or a standard splitter when working with this many pieces. And depending on how you have things set up, you might need some longer cables, which can be picked up separately as well. Also, when the fans are set to push config on the radiator, the IQ connect port is blocked by the fittings. So something else just to keep in mind when you're planning out your build. And that might seem overwhelming to try to plan out how many fittings and different supplies that you need if you've never done this before. So Corsair does have an online cooling configurator where you can choose your case, the components you plan to use, and then it ends up giving you a list of all the supplies you'll need for the build. 
So anyway, a huge thanks to Corsair for sending out all these things for the build. I want to know what you think about the build in the comments below. A huge thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.